So the last thing that we want to solve for this problem is the thermal efficiency and for that we'll use the definition of network divided by Q in and notice this is per unit mass for both of them what we're going to do we've already expressed work net in terms of per unit mass through the boiler uh, we're going to now do the same thing of Q in in terms of per unit mass through the boiler. So we'll begin with the boiler itself and try to determine Q in. We will be using the first law for that. There is no work in the boiler. Kinetic and potential energy are neglected. Now I'm writing the mass flow rate at four coming into the boiler. Let's go back and look at our schematic. Let's see where the heck was it. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, Mass 4 or 5, they're the same thing because it's basically mass flowing into the boiler and out of the boiler. It doesn't matter which we use. I put M.4 there, but it could have been M.5 as well. What we'll then do is on a per unit mass basis, And we know the enthalpies at both of those states. So that's per kilogram through the boiler. Uh, the reheat cycle. So let's take a look at the equation for the reheat. Again, that will be the first law applied to the reheat cycle. And in this case, the mass flow rate that we're dealing with is M.6 because that is what is flowing through the reheat. There is no work done in the reheat. So on a per unit mass, we divide by M.5. We then use the continuity equation to come up with an expression for M.6. Just like we did before. So with that, we get the heat into the reheat boiler. Kilojoules per kilogram through the boiler. So with that, we can now evaluate the total heat transfer in as being the boiler plus the reheat. kilojoules per kilogram through the boiler. Given that we've evaluated work in, in the earlier segments, in the same way, that is mass flow rate through the boiler, we can just divide these two. Okay. 
And when we do that, we get the thermal efficiency 44.4%. And that is the final answer to part B of the problem. So you can see the thermal efficiency is quite a bit higher than we saw for the simple Rankine, and that's because we've been increasing the efficiency by doing both the reheat as well as the regeneration. And essentially that's increasing the area uh, under the curve that, that we talked about, increasing the efficiency uh, for Rankine, it would result in those improvements. And, and that's what we're seeing here with the higher thermal efficiency. So that concludes the example problem. Uh, as you can tell, these are kind of laborious calculations, but methodical. You write out your process diagram and your process schematic, and then you start getting the state information. You go around, determine whatever you can determine. Uh, we then went and we evaluated the mass fraction Y. Once we had the mass fraction, we could then proceed ahead and determine the mass flow rate knowing the total power out of the power plant and from there then it was just a matter of evaluating the heat transfer and the thermal efficiency so that's kind of a summary of the solution set and that concludes this lecture thank you